So I'm talking about QMAT. This is Apache Mahout's new uh, quantum computing interface. My name is Andrew Musselman. I'm a VP of the Mahout project. Uh, I am local to Portland, so um, my commute here was about seven minutes. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, today we're going to talk about Mahout, quantum, why quantum and Mahout, uh, a little bit about what Mahout's core functions are, which is basically distributed mat matrix arithmetic, um, the rationale for QMAT, um, and then what we have built so far, uh, which so far is basic logic gates. Um, and we have some next steps as well. So the timing for, um, for this conf, conf was good. We've had a lot of new developments we wanted to share. Um, uh, we'll have a little notebook demo, um, some, uh, pretty pictures and then some next steps and then how to get involved if you're interested. Uh, anybody, uh, have any familiar, uh, familiarity with Mahout previously? No? Okay. A little bit. Um, so my, uh, my experience with Mahout was uh, hearing about it as an option when I was building a recommender system for a music streaming service. Um, it was at the time a recommender system. Um, I got involved in the project uh, when we used it at a bank and tried to make a recommender system for bank users um, and found a bug and reported the bug and then fixed the bug and got involved that way. Um, its core uh, functionality is matrix math, um, whether that is doing uh, arithmetic, whether that's decomposing, um, whether that is uh, putting those into um, matrices of similarity between vectors, et cetera. Um, one of the more recent uh, developments was bringing forward a uh, simple DSL for mathematics. Um, it's called Samsara. We'll do a little bit of an intro to that too, just to give you a, a sense. Um, at this point, we have support for mu uh, multiple backends, including Spark, Flink. Uh, we had H2O, but that's gone by the wayside. Uh, and actually, we run the same code on CPU in core, in the JVM, on GPU, um, and now uh, we're moving into quantum as well. So that's just an intro to Mahout. Here's the timeline for this project. It's pretty long running Apache software project. Um, it started as a sub project of Lucene. Uh, anybody use Lucene for search or tokenization? So a search engine, uh, inside of it, they had an analytics package that had some clustering and they pulled uh, Mahout out as a top level project. Uh, and it developed over the years through a recommender system um, a revamp as far as having uh, back-end independence uh, moving off of Hadoop MapReduce because of that not being a good uh, framework for doing machine learning because of the iterative nature of that. Um, we had um, Zeppelin integration and um, an algorithm development framework a couple years ago and more recently we have started uh, branching out into quantum. So. That's what we're talking about today. Has anybody seen a quantum computer in person? No. Does anybody know what what the what the motivation for quantum computing is? Okay. Um, so there are some use cases for quantum that are basically finding the workload that works for this architecture. Um, these computers are real. Um, they have to be super cooled. They're very delicate. They're extremely expensive. So some big players have these, uh, these computers. Uh, they're not really available for, you know, your data center. Um, but there are online cloud platforms where you can sign in and <coughs> use, uh, use time on these machines. So, um, we were looking at what quantum computing is about. And as a matrix math project, it seemed to have a good overlap with some new features that made it make sense to bring this in. Um, so just the simplest way to describe the difference between classical uh, CPU and a quantum CPU is with a classical bit, you have <coughs> two states that are possible for each bit. Uh, but with a quantum bit or a qubit, you can have two to the n possible states. Um, it's more complicated than that, but basically 
the killer use case that you might be aware of is um, if you had a 256-bit encryption key and you wanted to break it with a classical computer, uh, you could throw all the power you wanted at it and never solve it, never break it out into its component factors. Uh, but with the right size of qubit, say to, to the 256th bit qubit, you could give it that key and because of the shape of that, uh, that qubit, it would be able to solve and break that, that key. We're not advocating for going out and breaking people's keys, but that's an example of a killer use case for this. Um, and this is notation. Uh, it comes from physics. I think this is called Dirac notation. Um, what these, uh, in these little um, uh, angled brackets are called bra uh, kets, um, and they're shorthand for this, for where you have the zero. This is basically your uh, basis vector from uh, linear algebra that is zero and one. And the ket that is one in the bracket is your basis vector for uh, uh, zero, I'm sorry, one and zero and then zero and one. So it's two, you know, two orthogonal basis vectors. Um, so this notation is somewhat new to, uh, to us. We've had to learn a lot just to be able to talk about this. And so uh, we are still in early days. However, um, this is not much of a leap from what we do in Mahout today. Um, what's different is that these components here, V0 and V1, are just uh, are different than we are normal, normally using. They are, com they are complex, uh, complex numbers. So we have not done complex numbers in Mahout. We've done binary and real valued matrices. So there is a bit of an advance there. Um, and this is just a little note that these kets are just basis vectors for a complex vector space. Um, and when you hear people talk about logic gates in quantum, uh, those are just matrices that you're going to multiply together. So when we saw that, uh, we thought this would be a nice use case for Mahout to bring this in and let people do this type of math without having to reinvent the wheel every time and learn a different framework anytime they wanted to do it. Um, here's just a simple example. Um, so this is the identity matrix where anything that you multiply by this matrix is, comes out as itself again. So this is basically uh, multiplying by one. Um, and you can see why, because when you multiply this out, you get one V naught plus zero V ones, and then zero V naughts plus one V ones. So that's, again, that ket coming back in, or qubit coming back in. Any questions on that or? Um, so the reason for bringing quantum into Mahout um, is, like I said, uh, the core capability of Mahout has been matrix math, matrix de decomposition, and also being back-end agnostic so that when you write code one time, you can run it in, in core CPU, on GPU, um, and you can uh, write your code with a simple DSL. Um, Mahout is very good at managing large-scale um, matrix objects. Um, and then when we looked at what quantum involved, we did say that essentially uh, it would just be a small stretch for us to add this. Um, and like I said, the only, the only real difference is that these vectors and matrices are, quanta are uh, complex valued instead of uh, binary or uh, real numbers. Um, just a little side trek into this DSL. Um, the vision for the quantum probably will be that we bring this into this DSL as well, so that when you write this type of uh, math, you can run it on whatever architecture you want and not have to rewrite your code. Um, here's an example, just comparing with Spark's MLlib for uh, A transpose times itself. Uh, and with MLlib, you have to look up the API or, you know, tab in Copilot or whatever and say, I want to do a transpose and I don't want to do a multiply. But every time you switch to another framework, you'll have to figure out what the API is. You'll have to make some changes. So the point with Samsara was to um, make it way more um, intuitive if you have a background in MATLAB or 
Um, if you if you if you are reading a paper and translating out the notation in the paper, that you can just sort of type what you're seeing instead of looking up APIs all day. Um, so here we have uh, a dot t is transpose of a times itself. That's as simple as it gets. And here's some other more, uh, examples uh, translating this equation for stochastic PCA into just uh, B times itself transposed minus C minus C transposed plus chi times chi uh, times S cross S. So that is, that is the vision with Samsara. You can write your math. You can translate directly out of papers. You don't have to be looking up APIs all day. And when you write it, then it runs on whatever backend you want. Uh, just some examples of how to instantiate matrices here. Here's a dense matrix, sparse matrix. So very straightforward. You can do slicing, um, arithmetic, and assignment. Um, so this is this is way simpler than a lot of other APIs. Obviously, you just use the symbols that you're used to, and you can think about the math in a symbolic way instead of thinking about, um, you know, how to how to figure <laughs> how to figure out which call to make every time. Uh, some other examples, you know, a dot b, a cross b, and these just are bare words in the in the DSL. You can just type them out. Um, and so here's just a visual example of what Mahout's good at, and this is the motivation for bringing quantum into this sort of framework. You have a, you want to multiply it by a transpose. You do blocking operations on the matrix, and then this math still works, and this distributed operation can happen this way, where you take that slice first slice, which is transposed to the first row, and then you add it to the second slice transposed plus and on and on. So this is why Mahut is good at distributed math, because it does this blocking operation and you can do your math without thinking about all this stuff behind the scenes. For QMAT, we looked at um, what's out there and there are a lot of big players here. Um, IBM is, uh, I think, the bigger player. Um, uh, AWS has a um, has a framework as well. Bracket, Circ uh, from Google. Uh, my, Microsoft is sort of down here with Q Sharp. Uh, Honeywell has a framework called TCAT. Um, and then when you look at who has platforms to actually run this stuff on, IBM has a real one. AWS has a real one. Google's does not look real to me, uh, but I didn't dive in too deeply. Honeywell does have a real backend. Uh, we have not used it. Um, but essentially looking at all these different frameworks, we wanted to bring this all into a harmonious front end where nobody has to figure out what's happening behind the scenes. You write your code, you can switch vendors. So it's an enterprise value to be able to change frameworks and everybody, anybody who's been involved in IT debate club on changing frameworks or changing vendors, it can go on for months, it can go on for years, people can get fired over it. So the point here is that this makes it a much light, more lightweight decision to choose your framework. If you want to change midstream, you can, and it's not painful. Uh, so where we are now is that we have these basic logic gates implemented uh, in Qiskit, which is IBM, Circ, which is Google, and Bracket, which is AWS. Uh, we have a draw function uh, that I believe is in a PR right now. We have a measure function that I don't think is, is done yet. We have an execute function that's in flight. And this is sort of where QMAT fits into Mahout as uh, you know, in the layer cake here. Uh, we have Samsara on the left, and this is more the traditional um, math DSL. And then you have QMAT over here for the quantum. Uh, like I said, we are so early that we have not talked about bringing the quantum under the DSL so that you can do that math, but it would be nice for us to do that at some point when we have time. Um, so here's an example of what this looks like on the right. Like I said, these gates, these logic gates, are just matrices that you multiply together. Um, so uh, when you're typing this code out, you don't have to worry about uh, which matrices you're working with, but you can just say apply a NOT gate, apply a Hadamard gate, C NOT gate, et cetera. Um, and so these are all defined in those three frameworks that I mentioned. Uh, you do not have to uh, change your code. What you do change is just your backend config. Uh, there's a notebook demo. I can switch over to that um, in a second. Uh, we have been doing stuff in Copilot. 
Um, the reasoning is it actually is um, it's pretty convenient for everybody who has a Google Workspace account. Um, it does have a an affordable runtime. You can switch um, you can switch which backend you're working on. Here's just uh, some examples of some of the research that has been done. Um, these visualizations are not in there yet, uh, but we that's on the roadmap. Um, we just had a meeting this week to discuss that. Um, these block spears are um, a way to visualize a very simple qubit, um, and basically these these are good for very small um, dimension qubits. Once you get into higher dimension qubits, the visualization kind of blows up. Just like um, when you're looking at vectors in high dimensional space, you don't really visualize 14 or 8 billion dimensions. You just think three dimensions and say the word 14. Um, in an example that we have in GitHub, you can actually launch this from our project. You can open in Colab. And this just opens up the notebook. So this is actually where we recommend that people get involved. Um, this one is already run. So this has a, when you get in here, uh, if you try this out, you just run pip install. It gets all the dependencies going. And here what you can do is um, define your back end. You initialize a QMAT object. You make an empty circuit, and circuit is the word for um, assembling these matrices together, basically matrices in either linear form or some other chain form. Um, and what you can do is run the cells here. And do some measurement. And then what we have already is, uh, it might be too small. Is this too small to see? So here's a visualization of what this circuit looks like. Um, so quantum circuits are a form of workflow that gets assembled. And what, uh, what this shows us doing is uh, starting on the first qubit with a Hadamard gate, uh, applying a NOT gate over here, and applying a poly X gate here and then uh, doing measurement on all four of these qubits. Um, so this is where we are now. This is, um, this is our current state. We are able to assemble circuits uh, with uh, backend agnostic uh, code, and we can visualize circuits. Like I said, next steps are um, a backend agnostic measurement function, uh, draw function. This is actually just relying on the Qiskit function and then an execute method, which will actually then run your workload on a simulated quantum computer or a real, real uh, computer on one of the uh, platforms that are available. This, um, this draw method is uh, only really uh, implemented in Qiskit. So CERC, uh, their documentation tells you to go use Qiskits and Bracket just tells you that they don't have that. Any questions on this, or good? Uh, so the rest that we have is just some examples of what you've already seen. Uh, we will be implementing this uh, in the next few months. We then have next steps, uh, actually uh, agnostic draw and measure and execute methods, uh, developing more use cases. Um, building out the examples folder, and then uh, getting into quantum machine learning methods. So that then loops around and makes, makes this more useful. So actually useful in a way that maybe it has been in classical computing. Uh, if you want to get involved, we used to say try it with a Docker uh, image or get a binary or source build. At this point, we are saying for QMAT, just go get, uh, get into GitHub uh, and run a notebook straight out of there. and. Um, if you want to contribute any documentation, bugs, or uh, work on features, um, get onto the user list here. Um, if, and if you would like to be writing code, get on the dev list. We also do have an official Apache software uh, Slack channel that if you, are, uh, if you send us the e your email, you can join as a guest. And so that's a great way to keep in touch as well. Um, 
So what was, there was one other thing I wanted to show. Oh, I think I did. Oh, well, this is the homepage that has a ton of documentation on uh, all, the, all the previous Mahout work. Um, what we also have is this cute new logo. So this is the logo for, for QMAT, a little kumquat. Um, but that was it. Any questions or comments? I think we have plenty of time. All right, thanks for coming out. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>